Hello students, today we are going to learn a little bit about nuclear chemistry, okay? This video is going to introduce you a little bit into nuclear chemistry. Well, let's first talk about what you know already, okay? You know about physical changes where no new substances are formed, okay? <clears throat> For example, uh, water, ice melting into liquid water, no new substances are formed, and this is the lowest amount of energy involved in the, in the change, okay? You also know about a chemical reaction where there is a new substance formed, okay? And it involves electrons, okay? And most of the time we're talking about valence electrons when we're talking about chemical reactions, okay? Now, nuclear reactions, <clears throat> also a new substance is formed, okay? But the big thing here is that we're talking about changes in the nucleus, okay? We're not talking about changes in the electrons. That's the main difference here. Um, and it's that there's the highest amount of energy involved in, in nuclear reactions, okay? So when we talk about nuclear reactions, we're not going to be uh, worrying about um, electrons or valence electrons for most of the time. Okay, um, just a quick review, okay, on isotopes. We talked a lot about this first semester, but isotopes are uh, different versions of the same atom, okay? Just as, is, as you can have two oranges, okay, with different sizes, okay, and different masses, I mean, um, you can have two of the same atoms with different masses. <clears throat> For example here, this lithium has a mass of 6, this lithium has a mass of 7, this lithium has a mass of 8. They all have three protons, that's why they're lithium, okay, but they have different number of neutrons, so they have different masses. Now when you look at the periodic table, the average mass of lithium is 6.941, okay, but um, the actual isotopes will have different masses, okay? So this is one way to indicate uh, the number of protons and the mass of an isotope where the mass is on top, okay, and the number of protons is on the bottom or the atomic number. Okay, you can also do it this way where you have the, the element name, a dash, this is not a negative sign, okay, a dash, and then this is the mass, okay, it is not the atomic number. Well, <clears throat> just a little bit of vocabulary that you'll need to know in order to, to do well in this unit. Okay, when we say an isotope is radioactive, we mean it's unstable. The nucleus is unstable, okay? And it's going to break down spontaneously on its own into lighter and more stable elements, okay? And we'll look at an example in just a little bit. And those are usually called daughter nuclei. Um, nuclear decay. Okay, that's just the process of this breakdown right here. Okay, it occurs when a radioactive isotope decays into, I forgot to put a word there, lighter elements. The nucleon, okay, is essentially either a proton or a neutron. Okay, electrons are not nucleons. And the word nuclei is just the plural for nucleus. Nucleus is single, nuclei is plural. Okay, so the particles involved in nuclear reactions, okay? We have a proton with a mass of 1. Of course, number of protons are the charge of 1. We have the electron with no mass and the charge of negative 1. We have the neutron uh, <clears throat> with a mass of 1 but no charge, okay? Uh, and then we have the alpha particle, which you know Rutherford used in his experiment. And we, the symbol for the alpha particle is a little fish-looking symbol, okay? Now, the alpha particle has uh, two protons, and its mass is four, okay? So this also means the alpha particle. Now, interestingly enough, the alpha particle is the same thing as the nucleus for helium, okay? But it has no electrons, okay? Uh, we have a beta particle which is essentially the same thing as the electron, okay? If you look at its uh, mass and charge, it's the same thing as the electron. And the gamma ray is just a high energy ray. It has no mass and no protons, okay? It's just pure energy. 
Now, when we're uh, talking about nuclear equations, we have to balance them out in the same way that we balance out chemical reactions. Okay, for example, here we have in plutonium a mass of uh, 240, okay, and it decays into uranium-236 plus an alpha particle. Okay, 236 plus 4 is the same thing as 240, okay? The, the number of protons is 94, okay, here 92 plus 2, okay, and, and that also is going to be the charges, okay, the electrical charge, because the mass and the electrical charge has to be conserved. If we see here, so this is a, a decay, okay, with an alpha particle. This is an electron capture, okay, where the, the, the rubidium here is capturing an electron. So 81 plus 0 is going to equal 81. 37 plus a negative 1 is going to equal 36, okay? Now that's 30, since the atomic number is 36, this element is now krypton. It's no longer rubidium, okay? Because of that, we can predict, okay, an unknown in a nuclear reaction. Here we have 241 plus 4. So we know the mass here total on this side is going to be 245. And then we have 95 plus 2. So we know the total mass, the total uh, charge will be 97, okay, of this unknown element X. But you have to take into consideration this right here. We have two neutrons, okay, so we already have um, two in the mass, okay, so 245 minus 2, 1 times 2, okay, is actually 243. So when you look at the periodic table, the atom with um, atomic number 97 is berkelium, okay? So this is going to be berkelium-243, okay? And we can put the atomic number here as well. And we'll have lots of practice in doing this, okay? And that's pretty much it.